Every once in a while in a man's life, when the moment is right, you buy a new Toyota 4Runner. It's awesome, but you find yourself pondering. What are the top six mods or accessories I should tackle first? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you that today on Jason Explains Things. Hey everyone, welcome to Jason Explains Things. If you happen to see my last off-roading video, you might have seen a sneak peek of this at the end. But for everyone else who hasn't seen it yet, this is my family's new 2021 Toyota 4Runner TRD Off-Road. Now the reason why I went with a TRD Off-Road instead of a TRD Pro, uh, like you see a lot on YouTube, is because I wanted all of those off-roading features that the Pro has, the, the locking rear diff, the, the crawl control, the multi-terrain select, all that kind of thing, but for, you know, you spend another $10,000 and then you get, you know, you get the Fox shocks, you get the cooler color, you get leather seats. But for me, a lot of the fun of owning a, a vehicle, whether that be new or old, is working on and improving it myself. So the TRD Off-Road was a perfect choice for me. So in no particular order, here are my top six mods or accessories I did to the truck right away to set it up for my family and for off-roading shenanigans. And FYI, none of what I'm about to show you is sponsored or given to me for free or at a discount or anything like that. Where'd you guys go? Oh. You guys come for the truck, but you stay for the jokes, right? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, number one uh, is tires. So this truck is awesome right from the factory. I, I, we, we loved it. We took it up actually to this exact trail the day we bought it, but it comes with some pretty pathetic all season tires. Um, I don't think Toyota should really even sell it that way in my opinion, but that's just me. The literal first thing I did, maybe only like three days after buying the truck is I headed down to my local discount tire and I chatted with the manager there about getting some BF Goodrich KO2s. The guys there were awesome, gave me $300 for my stock tires because they only had like 150 miles on them, which brought the price of four new 265 70R17s to around $700. Now I know what you're gonna say, everyone just calm down. Actually, don't calm down, angry comments. People see the video more that way. Ah, we're upset. <laughs> but I went with the stock tire size for now because I didn't want to worry about rubbing and I still need to, you know, research and save up for any eventual lift I'm going to do, which is probably a, a little ways down the road. So uh, it's going to be 31s for now. Hey, you guys just keep moving. We just, we just stop that. I was really glad that I upgraded the tires when I did because only two weeks later, we had a late season snowstorm with about two feet of snow and these tires handled that awesome. We've taken it off-roading a couple times. My wife took the truck across uh, the mountain pass on a road trip. Uh, she said they, they were great on the freeway. So these tires, I can say all around are awesome tires and KO2s are kind of known for that. I want to say thank you to the guys at my local discount tire for letting me bother you and videotape putting them on. Wait, wait, where the, oh, I see him. I see him. Hi. <laughs> Number two on my list are these awesome USA made crossbars from LFD Off-Road out of Colorado. These crossbars are really easy to install by yourself. Actually, even easier than the ones made by Toyota because you don't need to remove the crossbars. And I went with the steel powder coated option. Now, the only issue that came up during the installation was with this front crossbar with the built-in wind fairing. Uh, it's supposed to come with a rubber edge guard to protect the paint of your roof, and mine was missing that. So I emailed them about it, and within one business day, they responded, I like, really early too. I mean, they're in Colorado, so they get up a little earlier than I do, but... So not only did LFD respond in one day saying that they would send out the edge guard, but they sent it out uh, overnight, and I got it the next day. So in only two business days, they sent this to me, so... That, that is really cool. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention earlier is you can use these same crossbars in LFD's full length roof rack. So if you want to replace these side rails and upgrade later on, you can use the stuff you already bought. So I think that's really cool. For the time being, I MacGyvered my own edge guard with some weather stripping and duct tape. Really professional. <sighs> now, number three on my list of first mods and accessories for the Forerunner is paint protection. And the reason for that should be pretty obvious to you if you watched the last video that this was in. So before I install my crossbars, which will make washing the roof 
uh, difficult, I'm going to do a ceramic coating on the roof and also the entire vehicle. First off, you want to wash the vehicle very thoroughly and remove any wax on the surface of the paint. And for that, I'm gonna be using Chemical Guys Clean Slate Soap. Uh, after that, I'm gonna do a light uh, clay bar treatment from also with this light clay bar from Chemical Guys. And then for the ceramic coating itself, I'm gonna be using Armor Shield 9, which uh, a lot of YouTubers <laughs> use. I think they send it to a lot of people for free, but I bought it, gosh darn it. Oh my gosh, uh, doing a ceramic coating is a lot of work. There are tons of videos about ceramic coatings on YouTube, and hopefully it's not just a fad. <laughs> hopefully it does protect the truck for many years to come and also makes it easier to wash. Fingers crossed. What? Aha. Okay, number four on our list and my personal favorite so far are these beautiful rock sliders from Cali Raised. The main structure of the sliders is made from one and three quarter inch steel tubing and is rated to support the full weight of the truck should I ever need to use the sliders as a jack point. The install of these was really straightforward, just a, a billion bolts pretty much, uh, but it required no modifications or drilling to the Forerunner at all. Now I ordered these sliders as raw metal, which means I had to paint them and that is a ton of work, but I am really happy with the way it turned out. Hey, so we got the uh, Cali Raised rock sliders uh, unboxed and I'm gonna start prepping them for paint. TSP heavy duty cleaner is awesome stuff for prepping, like getting all the grease and maybe a little bit of surface rust off of bare metal. Also, uh, once we got all of the surface rust removed, you wanna use either a uh, pre-painting prep like this from Eastwood, or also I've heard that brake cleaner also works as long as it's the type that uh, kind of, you know, doesn't leave any film. And for any tough, uh, surface rust that doesn't want to come off, you can use steel wool and uh, a scuffing pad. I'll start here and then I'll just, I'll be doing tons of light coats. I, I, I'm essentially giving myself the day to paint this and the, uh, the top cap so I can do a really nice job. I want this to look like it was powder coated, like someone who knows what they're doing did it. And so I'm just gonna take my time and take breaks and have some fun and uh, probably get my first sunburn of the year. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do the bed liner now. So, uh, this is a two part kind of epoxy style bed liner. Uh, you take this, this red button here and then you push this down, mix it for two minutes, and then you, uh, and you spray. Woo! That kind of stinks. I let the paint and bed liner dry for a day, and then it was time to bolt them on. Now the only tricky issue with the passenger side is you have these bolts. So this is a nice extra long bolt with a washer, a spacer, a little uh, clip, a little J clip as they're calling it, and a washer and then a lock nut. So there's one there and that one's not too bad. And then there's also this one over here. And one other thing is I had to disconnect this bracket for my brake line, take it out, put this in and then put it back in. So over here on the driver's side, I would say actually this side is slightly easier. You have a couple things to contend with. First off, you have this bracket right here that you have to put in, and then there's another one right here. You have the gas tank skid plate that you have to loosen these three bolts right here. Just bend it down a little bit and then wedge in your, uh, your slider and then bolt it back up, and that's pretty much it. Another thing on sliders for you married dads out there specifically. So if you have to sell these, you know, the, the idea of rock sliders to your wife, you don't call them rock sliders, you call them heavy duty steps. <laughs> but for real, ever since we got the Forerunner, I have kind of felt bad for my youngest daughter, Ripley. Show how you do it. You're pretty good at that. Right after the install was done, Ripley was the first person to test them out. Oh, very good. You like it? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. You gonna give me a high five? Yeah. Now the step functionality is not just for kids, right? I mean, if you wanna get access to the roof, if you uh, store stuff up there, the steps are really great for that. 
Now, these are a bit expensive. They're probably the most expensive thing uh, that I've done so far to the truck. But if you wanna save some money, definitely consider ordering them raw and painting them yourself. It was actually kind of fun and I, I'm really happy again with uh, my paint job. Okay, next one I'm gonna do while sitting on my butt. <laughs> now, number five on my list is definitely important if you have kids or pets, and that is protecting the interior of your new 4Runner. We immediately got all weather floor mats because the carpet ones would probably look bad in about a day. These are a Toyota accessory. For the back here, we got a Husky liner off of Amazon. This is USA made, high quality, and I would say probably a little more affordable than WeatherTech. Another really cool USA made protection accessory that we got recently is this canvas back, uh, back seat protector. These use Velcro to attach to the carpet on the back of the seat. This should really help protect from dirt and other stuff when we go camping or just hauling dirty stuff. My last tip for protecting the interior is using a fabric treatment. There are tons of options for this, but I used one from Chemical Guys. You wanna make sure that the seats and carpet are as clean as possible and then spray the seats and floors with two light coats. Oh, come on. Always moving around. So, number six on our list is recovery gear. You're going to want to carry this whenever you leave the pavement. Now, before I show you what's in here, I, I want to say this is not a definitive list or a definitive kit at all. This is a work in progress, but it is a work in progress that I am working on. So, we're going to have snacks, you know, because you're a human and you might die. Water. Uh, I also carry a Smitty Built air compressor for airing up after going on a trail for a while. This is a really nice one. Also, I have an uh, airing down tool from ARB. It's my only ARB thing so far. <laughs> also, a uh, really basic tire repair kit. I'm, I, this, is, this is getting replaced in like a matter of days. This is, this is not enough, but, but I have it. Also, a 12 volt uh, jumper pack for uh, jumping your battery should you leave your lights on or something silly like that. A uh, army surplus shovel from my wife's grandpa. We got that in there. And then we also have a recovery strap and some shackles from Rhino Off-Road. Uh, got these on Amazon. They're a US company, but I don't think they're US made, but pretty good stuff. Yep. Okay guys, before I go, I just wanna stop and say thank you to the off-roading community here on YouTube and also on Instagram for all the great ideas for my new truck. TRD John on YouTube has awesome videos about foreigners that have been really helpful. I wanna also give a shout out to Colorado T4R on Instagram. You've inspired me a lot. <coughs> I mean, I'm copying you. <laughs> now I feel really lucky and blessed to be able to get this new truck. Since I have a young family, you know, it's really important to go out and, and, and have adventures and make memories. And since we live in Washington State, where there are no sports games, concerts, museums, festivals, car shows, block parties, or fun in general allowed, we have to go out and find our own fun. And we already have started doing that, and that's awesome. I am also really pumped to continue off-roading with my buddy Chris in his Colorado. So look for more DIY projects, adventures, and other shenanigans in the future. All right, well, I am off. Until next time, everybody, don't forget to do it yourself. <laughs>